Well, hello. Today is October 7. It is Friday, so we have weekend coming up. And here's the uh, kind of sea trap, but more, more geopolitical sea trap uh, for you today. And let's start with uh, from the start, so to speak. Let me show you something. Mr. Biden, uh, speaking to all kinds of, and obviously spread by all kinds of the American uh, lying media, warns of risk of nuclear Armageddon in high since Cuban Missile Crisis. And uh, basically what he says that uh, President Joe Biden said Thursday the risk of nuclear Armageddon is the highest it has been in roughly 60 years after Russian President Vladimir Putin renewed his threats. So obviously he is speaking about it as it's just like literally, you know, coming very soon and we are about to, you know, be all embroiled in this horrendous situation with the... Um, a nuclear war. Then obviously look what they continue to uh, speak about. The Russian leader accused of the United States and its allies of nuclear blackmail and said without elaborating that high-ranking official from NATO states had made statements about the possibility of using nuclear weapons of mass destruction against Russia. And look what Putin responded. If the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will certainly use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people, Putin said, an apparent reference to Moscow's sizable nuclear arsenal. First, most of it is, of course, bullshit, because, but let's uh, kind of uh, review this bullshit from the point of view of two different points. Uh, you already heard, read, I just read you that basically, Vladimir Putin didn't name uh, who was threatening uh, Russia with nuclear Armageddon, so to speak. Well, of course, it is complete bullshit. Here's one of those who threatens. Do you recognize this? Yes. Cheers, as Liz Truss says, she is ready to press nuclear button and unleash global annihilation. Annihilation, which was in October 24. So you cannot say that uh, Russians didn't point finger to Liz Truss and other psychos from uh, Western world who want to start the nuclear war. But here it is. This is Liz Truss. She is the uh, United K Kingdom uh, Prime Minister and she is the leader of the country which has some nuclear arsenal. So if you're telling me that the Yahoo News in this particular case lies, well, they don't. It was known all over the world at that time, but as we understand, and you have to keep it in mind, most of the Western media work for the public whose attention span is, span is that of the aquarium fish. I know some people now will probably accuse me again uh, of discriminating against aquarium fishes, but I'm sorry, guys, it is what it is. And uh, so for the most part, majority of the public, I, again, I don't know... Um, what are the percentages? Probably, I don't know, 60, 65 percent. They do have a very short attention span, especially in the Western world, and especially youth nowadays with their clip uh, and mimetic, uh, so to speak, uh, viewing of things. So, and suddenly people, of course, for, for, uh, forget that what happened just literally months ago. You know, so and Mr. Biden continues to bullshit that yeah, a nuclear Armageddon, uh, Armageddon is at hand. Well, this is one thing. Obviously, Liz Truss uh, uh, basically was pretty much, you know, straightforward, you know, and I, we quoted her that she's ready to unleash Armageddon. And so when NBC News says that, uh, oh, yeah, Russians didn't point out who that was, oh, please, go screw yourself. But then there is another thing that Mr. Putin threatened. Well... Let me show you that Mr. Putin never threatened any kind of use of the nuclear weapon. And Mr. Biden and all of his cabal in uh, Washington, D.C. are spreading rumors. The reason uh, I uh, am stating this, because look at this. Vladimir Putin merely repeated what is written in Russian military doctrine, which has been accepted in 2014. And it's been known since hell knows when. Look at this. Article 24 and Article 27 of Russian military doctrine, which has been signed uh, uh, in December 2014. 
it is effectively eight years old. Look at this. Uh, Russian Federation views armed uh, 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 an attack on the state, the Union state, of any uh, or any activities with the use of military force against it as an act of aggression against the Union state and implement responses uh, and implements responses actions. But look at this. This is yeah, it's a little bit crude uh, translation of the. Uh, um, doctrine because it was done by some English guy, but still, hey, it works, okay? And here's the most important thing. The Russian Federation reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in response to use against it and or its allies of nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction, as well as in the case of aggression against the Russian Federation with the use of conventional weapons when, uh, when uh, is under threat the very existence of the state. The decision to use nuclear weapons is taken by President of Russian Federation. It is crude translation, of course, but you understand that Vladimir Putin actually, when he was talking about this, he was merely quoting Russia's military doctrine, which has been around for eight years, and nobody was talking about Cuban Missile Crisis. Why? Why it is uh, actually what NBC does and Biden and his administration spreading those uh, rumors or out, lying outright, let's face it, it, it just lies, you know, they lie, that's the whole thing, the only thing they do. Because look at this, let's go to the Congressional Research Service, you see that? And this is not the full uh, list of this, but as you can see yourself, the Russian nuclear weapons, doctrine, forces, and modernization. Even if you go a little bit back in the, the uh, year 2019, there are things which are even earlier than that. Guess what it is? This is just the list of the uh, reviews and quotes, actually, direct quotes, of the nuclear weapons doctrine and forces and modernization of Russia by Congressional Research Service. In other words, the United States, the White House, the, Con the Congress, not that there are really bright people there, but still, you know, the Congressional Research Service is trying to do its job as, be as best as they can. They knew about this clause and about Russian military doctrine, at least for, from the um, inception, from the start. Here's the proof. Here's the just partial list. You, you can go and you can see that it's actually much longer. And it's been discussed at length and nobody was scraping in hysteria and nobody was saying things about that we have a uh, nuclear Armageddon uh, you know uh, upon us we don't it is all about this let me show you you see this this is today's ah there you go well don't <laughs> read those breaking news which normal Russian people met with applaud Applause, because obviously you, you bans Russia from using crypto services. My God, Russia is about to collapse. But you see this brand crude. It's 97.51. It's about two hours ago. Probably by the end of the next week, it could be somewhere around, you know, 100. And this is the worst case scenario for the United States, especially after the OPEC plus countries agreed on this massive cut. Well, guess what it is and what it means. Well, you, many of us who live in the United States and in Canada, they already know that. It means rising prices at the pump. All the short-lived, uh, you know, uh, lowering of the prices. It lasted, what, for months, months and a half? And, of course, it was, you know, basically paraded and fanfares were all over the place about how great, you know, Biden's, you know, ideas are by selling out pretty much the strategic petroleum reserve of the United States, which are now depleted. And as I already stated, it's probably about 18 percent, some say 18, but more popular numbers around 30. So it's literally, he sold out two uh, thirds of the strategic reserves and the United States now, well, it has to figure out how to fill it back. But meanwhile, yes, we're going to be having the above uh, $5 per gallon for the lowest grade. And it's probably going to hit six at some point of time. And this is all for the uh, EU and United States deciding to cap uh, uh, oil price for Russia. Or even, oh my God, declining to ensure the tankers. 
Well, that's the problem with the people who actually grew up of the financial world and uh, from the economics uh, uh, departments of the uh, Ivy League or Oxford, what have you, you know, the Western uh, uh, financial people. They don't understand Russia can insure tankers herself. It is a very rich country, but they don't get it. I mean, they don't understand those things. They are so absolutely detached. And of course, when you look at this thing, which is, of course, the oil price, and it is very high, and then you begin to look also at the events at the front in Ukraine, and now I'm getting back to this tactical minutia, obviously, uh, for, for status, you can start listening to Mr. Uh, Douglas McGregor, who explains to Mr. Symes, Mr. Symes, the publisher of the, the National Interest, it's a, this uh, yellow rag, you know, basically tabloid, geopolitical tabloid, but he basically explains to him yesterday, and I will leave the um, link uh, to his conversation with Mr. Symes, uh, uh, about what those offensives, so quote unquote, are. And when you see again that basically everything has been repulsed, Fact is, nobody even reports that Russians took Zaitseva village, then they took another village, then they took another hamlet and town, and it's not even being reported because, yeah, you know, you have to always report Ukrainian victory, so to speak, but well, in reality, operationally, it's like madness. I mean, they throw bodies in any place they can try to find the break uh, in Russian defenses, but yeah, it's too bad. They're not going to find it that much. And uh, again, as I stated, listen, if you don't trust me, listen to Mr. Uh, Douglas McGregor. And uh, he is definitely more uh, operationally uh, experienced than me. And if you don't trust his uh, judgment, well, you know what? You need to really start looking for some good psychiatrist or psych clinical psychologist. And that's the issue. So you have the oil price going up. All those caps imposed on Russia mean absolutely nothing. Everybody knows what is coming in Ukraine. And... Uh, you know, that's one of the things which everybody keeps in mind. You see, this is the uh, uh, Russian information agency, TASS, which reports yesterday that 25%, each uh, fourth region of Russia basically already reported on the fulfillment of the plan uh, on uh, partial mobilization. And other subjects, other three quarters, are basically in the half or above half and I about to finish it pretty soon and while obviously all kinds of li liberal and uh, lying media in Russia and in the West continue to talk about how many uh, men try to run from Russia and there are some absolutely there are like 200,000 of them or something like that so but most of them are not even uh, legible for uh, mobilization it's primarily this liberal and as they call it, educated class it's not educated class when you have even if you have the master's degree in software engineering or master's degree in communications uh, it doesn't make you automatically educated but that's whole, the whole other story but point is that yeah everybody knows what's coming I mean, it's just the matter of uh, how long it will take. Some say up to two months by uh, the uh, November, by the end of November, maybe. So I don't know. Maybe it's uh, going to happen in already you know, by the end of October. But who knows? But yeah, Russians will continue to drive uh, towards them, uh, towards Nikolaev and Odessa. Most likely, most likely. Don't quote me on that. They might change the uh, plans. But even already, uh, but even today, well, it's already confirmed that the. Um, reinforcements are already pouring in and that is why uh, uh, VSU and bunch of the um, uh, those volunteers so to speak uh, uh, try to throw themselves at whatever comes you know in front of them and obviously as always it ends up with a catastrophe for them. Uh, fact is the rumor has it and again I tend to believe this rumor that basically at uh, Red Liman or Krasny Liman and at Swatova, you in uh, Kremenaya, the only speech you hear there is English and Polish. So 
we know that you know the bunch of those volunteers most of them probably cadre uh, military from NATO are already part, uh, basically taking part in those offensive so to speak and they are being uh, slaughtered in uh, industrial copious amounts so and this will continue for a while until this operational pause so to speak and then yeah who knows when this offensive starts but it's it's coming everybody knows that so it's just the way it is so when you uh, put this together and you put together this insanity and this is uh, a week ago from uh, the newsweek you begin to understand how desperate those people are and as i already stated pentagon is not gonna outthink uh, russian general staff they just can't and it is understandable that pentagon people are trying to get uh, their operational experience in ukraine but again they still do not fight the full might of russian army and we know that only a small portion of russian army is uh, basically fighting in ukraine but look at this while uh, in Newsweek, we know that Newsweek is a uh, uh, neocon rag, the most, you know, batshit crazy and, you know, Russophobes work there. They, you know, just publish all kinds of absolute bullshit. But here it is. They obviously talk about the uh, anonymity of people. They afforded anonymity to those people in Pentagon, quote unquote. And here's one of the guys who says that about the uh, response to alleged, which never happened, Russian threats. We are in uncharted territories as a senior intelligence office, officer, tre threatening to respond forcefully and creating catastrophic consequences for Russia without suggesting nuclear war. Is that strong enough to deter Putin? Putin? And is it really clear? I'm not so sure. I know he's not so sure. I don't think so. There are many people there who understand what real war is. And that's another issue. And look at this. There's another guy. He flew bombers. That means he bombed the shit out of mostly weddings and peaceful people. Here it is. There is another Pentagon officer. We have to ponder whether other non-nuclear threats are powerful enough to deter Putin, says a former bomber pilot who is now a Washington-based Pentagon officer. So these guys are basically who lost all their wars and who basically had their especially spectacular uh, ass handing to them in uh, Afghanistan. They talk about uh, basically decapitating uh, strike on Russia and blowing Kremlin to smithereens and thinking that, yeah, we're so cool, nothing gonna happen. But then again, you know, you're talking to people who probably got, uh, got educated on this uh, top gun and they certainly do not understand actually the gravity of what they're saying, not to mention the fact that they obviously operate on simple, not only a rumor, but well-established and exposed the lie of Mr. Biden and his administration because Russia never threatened to use nuclear weapons, let alone uh, tactical nuclear weapons. Why? I mean, Russia does a swell job of slaughtering uh, WSU in copious amounts without, on the, by the conventional means. And now when you have other 200,000, the first wave of partial mobilization coming in, it will just accelerate. But that's how desperate they are. And all this nuclear talk, all this uh, baloney, they just spread lies, literally. They look into your face and they lie to, you, to your face. Is of course, the fact that they are desperate. And their desperation is explained in a very simple way. It's November 8th. And November 8th is, of course, as we all know, midterms. Midterms and guess what? Ask yourself a question when you uh, talk about it and think about it. Uh, does uh, Kremlin, or let's say Russian political top, know about the upcoming midterms? Of course they do. Why do you think they uh, keep that uh, charade going with the, all those situation with EU and the United States? It's a deliberate thing, guys. Because as I already stated, and everybody states, wars are not won on the tactical level. Not to mention the fact that Russia kicks air, uh, Ukrainian ass in, and uh, NATO ass on the uh, tactical level anyway. But I'll talk about operational strategic level militarily. And of course, we're talking about the fact that what? In war, if you win the war, you achieve, you, you win it by achieving the political aims of the war. What are political aims of the war? Political aims of the war is not just uh, defeating of Ukraine. It's just one of the fronts. 
it is wiping out the floor with the remnants of the Pax Americana and globalist agenda, which is primarily, of course, originated in the Western civilization. And uh, that is why when people say, oh my God, you know, the company of Vesu somehow took some Hamlet. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, let them, you know, let them stay there in the open field and, you know, continue to hold it if they want to. But the most important point, of course, is the fact that uh, basically Middle Eastern sheikhs basically told Biden to go and pound sand. And uh, this is just one of the uh, points, so to speak, and one of the spearheads, if you wish, in the war on the present day West, which is essentially globalism. And this is just one of them, because everybody expects now what's going to happen in the midterms. Some say that Democrats will do better than anybody expects. I don't know, but something tells me that it could be a slaughter. And even the rhinos, and many of them are rhinos, Republicans in name, only that the same neocons, the same corrupted, uh, you know, military industrial complex, you know, servants. But Republicans, unlike Democrats, are a little bit saner, even, you know, because they, at least some of them are actually, they do understand what, what happened if the real war starts between Russia and the United States. So, and that is the point. Uh, basically, Biden's administration right now sustains one economic and political defeat after another. Now they obviously are facing the situation in Ukraine after partial mobilization. That is why they ratchet their, uh, their rhetoric and absolutely reckless rhetoric about the uh, nuclear threats from Russia by lying, obviously. And when you put this together as a sum of things, you will see yourself the political pendulum, so to speak, swinging away from the West, away from the United States. And this is just small part I can explain to you and talk about in this short, you know, 25, 27 minute conversation, because I don't want to constantly keep your mind on this, uh, so to speak, you know, exciting news, because that's what Biden administration in its subservient media do. They need to keep people on their toes. They need to keep people totally disbalanced emotionally, psychologically, because that's the only way they have any chance to survive what might become, I'm not saying, again, don't listen to me on this, don't quote me on that. I'm not political strategist, that means uneducated guy who looks into the polls, but we may encounter the situation when the Democratic Party will face the uh, fact of or actual de facto demolition. And uh, once that happens, well, who knows where the United States will go. And that really matters. And of course, you understand, once the uh, uh, if and if, don't quote me on that, if Republicans uh, get their both houses, both Senate and uh, uh, House, we might talk about the possibility of the Article 25, and we might talk uh, about the possibility of impeaching, a real serious impeaching of Biden. And who knows what might happen, happen after then. But again, these are all speculations. But that's the whole thing. There is a war and Russia doesn't fight Ukraine. Ukraine is just avatar. Ukraine is a proxy which will be sacrificed, is being sacrificed actually. I, I mean, Pentagon people don't care about losses as long as they and their families are safe. You know, but, and again, as I already stated, uh, no... American officer ever fought in defense of his homeland, period. None of them. They don't understand what it is, and that is why they just play, basically play with all those, you know, uh, general operational concepts, and they throw, you know, them and Polish uh, mercenaries and some idiots from the other countries, you know, uh, at Russian guns and uh, other means of destruction, and then they say, oh, yeah, you know, we've captured a couple of villages. So, and that's what is this all about. It is about the uh, November 8th. It is about midterms. And of course, the politically, what matters now is not two villages of, uh, let's say, Russians. Again, Russians captured in the uh, last couple of days few villages and hamlets. I mean, and nobody even reports that. But uh, what matters is that uh, basically uh, the situation in Ukraine is also desperate for the combined West. And here we are. 
and looking and reading mainstream media, most of them, of course, controlled by the Democratic National Committee, one begins to understand how desperate they are because they are lying nonstop. And do not forget, actually, when you ask me, what was the explosions? What was the blowing up of the Nord Streams, if not the act of desperation? And that's what is this all about. So midterms are coming. But uh, the situation, obviously, in the France and Ukraine stabilized really well, and Russians continued their, uh, well, basically, not offensive attacks and advancement in the, uh, and, uh, around Artyomovsk and other places. And we have the gas about $5 uh, dollars per, uh, <laughs> per gallon for the lowest grade, and things are, they, they do not look good. And no matter what now West does, it absolutely, it misfires constantly. And this is what I wanted to tell you today, for you to always keep the eyes, never lose the sight of the larger uh, picture, larger scheme of things. And again, you win wars by achieving political objectives. Today for Russia, political objectives are very simple. As Mr. Medvedev stated, it's basically unconditional capitulation in the economic war, the only war which matters, because we, as we all know, using Mr. Clausewitz, war is just continuation of the policy by other means, and this truism has never been ever debunked, because it is, it's called truism, because it is very true, and that's the stake, that's the game which we are facing right now. So, this is what I uh, wanted to tell you today, and this is the start of the weekend, guys. So, <clears throat> have a nice weekend, and those who can uh, support me on Patreon, I probably will be doing some locals uh, account very soon. Please do support me, I would really appreciate your help, and obviously those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, and uh, what can I say, guys? Have a nice weekend, and again... I don't think so. We are in Cuban Missile Crisis. This is all basically a wizard of Oz theatrical performances by those people in Washington. And to prove it to you that, in conclusion, here it is. This is what really matters. You see this? US and Russia make headway in nuclear talks. And that means the back channels are still open. Russians and Americans still the, uh, basically uh, negotiating the START, which is Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. And of course, yeah, we know that the United States needs desperately the access to Russian newest nuclear technologies, be that Sarmat, Avangard, or things of this nature. But uh, please, don't think that Russians are stupid, okay? And the Russians will talk, and their back channels are open, and not only on the start and strategic stability issues. We, as Mr. Jake Sullivan uh, uh, actually confirmed a few days ago, there are other channels open, and something tells me there's some bargaining happening there. There's something happens there which we do not know yet. And uh, as I already stated, we'll wait and see. So that's my talk for you today's guy. Guys, and I'll talk to you later. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.